What shall we talk about? like to talk about detachment. Anything else? Conditioning. All right, let's start with that. Do you want to talk about it superficially or go into it very deeply? We can do both. If we talk superficially, we won't get very far. But if we go into it rather deeply, we can go very, very, very far. So it's up to you which you would you like to do. So I'll begin superficially and then work our way through it. Physically, we are conditioned. Man, woman. Biologically, we are different stature, short, tall. And depending on the climate, food, and so on, environment, our body is conditioned by all that also. If you live in the Asiatic countries where it's pretty warm and scarcity of food, then the body is short not very fat, and so on. From there you can observe (coughs) outwardly, from outward investigation briefly, we can go into the whole inner structure of ourselves. Why is it we are conditioned? Who conditions us? Conditioned being shaped according to a certain pattern tradition, culture, climate, food and society, uh, all that. What makes makes for conditioning? Why why are human beings conditioned? Why are you, if I may ask most politely, are you aware that you are conditioned? Just aware, just to know that you are an American with all the background of America, the vulgarity, the noise, the violence, the you know what's happening in that country. And also if you are European, are you also aware of your condition? The hard struggle after the war, the division of various countries, which is really a tribalism continued. And are you aware that you respond, act and react according to your conditioning? Are you aware of all this? Don't correct it yet. Don't say it's wrong reaction or right reaction. Just be aware of it. Why are you? Condi- why is the brain conditioned that way? First of all, the brain 
can only function efficiently when it is secure, when it is safe, when it feels completely protected. When it is not protected, when it is not safe, when there is no security to it, then there is always neurotic actions, uh, all that follows. So, the, the brain demands, needs to be completely secure, obviously. It can be secure in a tradition, in nationality, saying, I am a British, I am an American or an uh, Arab and so on, there, by identifying with a group of people, it feels secure. Being a Catholic in a Catholic country, <clears throat> or a communist in communist country, totalitarian countries, and so on. Or it can feel very safe in a belief. I believe in God, or I don't believe in God, which is equally the same, or in some ideal. Right? Are you, are you following all this? Or it can be completely safe in some kind of illusion. Right? God is an illusion, but it is so respectable, it's so accepted, it has become almost uh, normal. But it is still illusory. Or it can feel completely secure in a small community, protected, safe, everybody agreeing not to do this or to do that. So all the brain demands, ours and needs, that it should be completely secure. Right? Are you aware of this? That you may or have certain ideals, certain beliefs, certain identification with nationalities and so on, so on, so on. Coming from India, the tradition, the beliefs, the thousands of gods and their particular family and so on. You follow? Or coming from an Arab world of the Arabs, they have certain tremendous bigoted conditioning. They won't believe in certain things and so on. If you are a fundamentalist in Christian world, you the same thing. So you have all these phenomena going on in front of you, which is yourself. You have certain beliefs, certain traditions, certain concepts, conclusions, they give safety to the brain. Right? Are you aware of this? I believe, I must, my opinion is this, I need that. All these are the demands of the brain which says, please give me security. It is seeking security. Right? It's right? Sir? In another sense, it's, it's very insecure to, to... What? It's very insecure to belong to nationality, for instance. I mean, people fight them. You see what I mean? In that there is also security. The terrorists I mean, believe. When, you, when people kill each other, there's no security. Of course, when the terrorists are what they are doing, they have certain concepts. They want to produce chaos in the world, and then from that chaos there might be right action from the right, and then the reaction then from the left. 
Then when they left, they'd say, they're home. That is their whole kind of thought. We don't have to bother about the terrorists. You follow all that follows. So he, are you, as a human being, aware that you are conditioned? Conditioned because the brain, your brain, demands and needs and must have security. You can have security for a career, a professor, a scientist, an engineer, a doctor, a pianist, or whatever it is. There you have got certain professions, certain skill, and the brain says, please, I will improve in that direction, but I am safe there. If I pass examinations, I will get a job, and all the rest of it. And there it is safe too. And if you don't want a job, if you don't want a career, then the brain says, What am I going to do? You see the problem? What am I going to do? I must live, I must have money, I must have a house, I may live with a girl or a boy, but I may not necessarily marry, and so on, so on. But the, the Brain that's uncertain becomes more and more confused. You fo- you're following all this? So, or uh, is one conscious, aware, know that you are conditioned? And being conditioned, you're attached to that. We want to discuss attachment, detachment. You, you are attached to your conditioning. Living in a world of the Arabs, if you are not an Arab, it becomes very, very difficult. So, being conditioned, becoming aware of that conditioning, you see, if I break up that conditioning, what's going to happen? Being uncertain of what is going to happen or might happen, then the brain says, I am attached to what I have. Right? Do you see this? I am attached to my conditioning because there at least I am safe. The safety or the security which the conditioning gives, the security which you get from your conditioning, it is possible to get that security only because you're insecure. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. First, see what is, right? And from there, move. If you don't see what is and then try to move, then you become totally lost. And you may, in that loss, you may find some, some kind of security, which must be illusory, deceptive, hypocritical, and all the rest of it. Right? So, I mean, I'm insisting in asking whether well, you are aware of your conditioning. This matter, very even partially, that's good enough. If you are aware, that's the fact, right? That is what is. Now, from there you can move. Now, what happens when you are conditioned? You act in a certain way. Huh? You act and behave in a certain way. Yes, but what actually takes place in the outer world and what takes place from the outer to the inner? You follow? What takes place? If I am conditioned as a Hindu or some uh, tribal uh, collective uh, conclusion, uh, tradition, what happens? I separate myself from others. You have your nationality in your conditioning, your tribalism, and I 
I belong to my tribalism, and we are at war with each other. Right? This is actually what's going on. The Jew and the Arab, the Hindu, you know, all the rest of it. So, where there is an attachment to your condition, there must be division, right? And from that division, there must be conflict. And very few are willing to give up this condition because they don't know what to do if there is no conditioning. See how the mind works, how the brain works? I am conditioned, I know I am conditioned, I realise logically, reasonably that from this conditioning arises various factors of division. And the brain says, if I let that go, what will happen? Wait a minute. So it says, give me assurance that there, is, that there is another kind of protection, then I will give this up. You are you're following all this? Hmm? So it wants to be assured that before it gives up its own petty little conditioning, it, it wants to be assured that there is another form of conditioning which will not be uh, conflicting, which will not bring about division. And so they invent the, uh, the idea or the ideal of brotherhood. <laughs> you understand? There are societies, there are groups of people working for international brotherhood, for unification of all that's going on. But that is, one, you are conditioned this way, you are being conditioned another way. Right? Do you see this? Do you see? I realize by my conditioning, I bring about conflict. I realize that. You have pointed out to me the reason, the logic, the nature of it. So, somebody comes along and says, work for brotherhood, right? Work for unity of man. So that becomes the ideal, and in that ideal I feel I'm secure. You, you, you're following all this? So I give up one form of conditioning and take on another form of conditioning, right? Now, to see this, to be aware of this, I am conditioned, I see about the, what, what are the results of this conditioning, and I, I see the logic of it, and I'm willing to give that up if you can assure me there is another form of safety, which is send some ideal, some utopia, some future state where I will have security. I will give this up and take on that, which is equally conditioning. You follow this? Do you see this? Now, to see that, to, have, to observe it and to have an insight into it, is intelligence, isn't it? Huh? Here you are silent. <coughs> so you're saying that any sort of idea at all is still conditioning, is still yes. creating conditioning. So vision. you begin to realize any form of ideal idea conclusion, whether right, left, centre, political, religious, hmm, is a form of conditioning. But much more important is to find out, are you giving up this form of conditioning 
and accepting another form of conditioning. If you are aware of that, if you have an insight into that, you know what I mean, if you see it, then that very perception is intelligence, isn't it? Hmm? <coughs> Look, <coughs> as long as I think I am British, Britain, 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 hmm? <coughs> and I like that idea. It gives me safety. I have identified with a particular geographic uh, land and I say, that's my country, my people, I know my tradition, I have, uh, from the Shakespeare and so on, so on, so on, cultural and so on, and I am very proud of it. Hmm? I am British. And that isolates me, doesn't it? I may join the common market, but I'm still damn good British. So what happens? That gives me pleasure, that gives me sense of security. I'm attached to my the green land and the beautiful country, the, the lanes and the hedges and the beauty and so on, and I'd rather have that than enter into something which is vast, which I don't know. You come along and tell me, look, if you are so identified with a country, with a tradition, with some conclusion, that in itself is the cause of war, cause of division, conflict and so on. And you come along and tell me, look, if you give that up, there's a better world. Hmm? One world, a concept. And I say, that's a marvellous idea, and I give this up and take on to that. Which is another form of conditioning. Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you? Now, to see it is intelligence. But not to see it and keep on being British huh, is essence of ignorance. Stupidity, whatever you like to call it. So what is it you are doing? What is it you, whether you are from America, from England, from India, from Far East, or from Australia, where fifteen nationalities I believe they are, you are here, what are you doing? Attached to your particular country? attached to your particular ideas, or demanding certain pleasures and want and building up a romantic concept of pleasure and holding to that. That's another form of conditioning. God, do you see all that? Huh? You're all very silent, I'm too. This is a discussion, dialogue. Sir, there's, there's something that, that uh, well, confuses me on this. We've talked about it sometimes before, and, and you've said that, that intelligence is security. Uh, if so you now, is, that might just be an no. idea that, you know, that our brains will see, seek security in to drop conditioning, which you say would be intelligent. Look if, look, if you and I see the nature of conditioning, the results of that conditioning, hmm, see the dangers of that conditioning, right? Seeing the danger is intelligence, isn't it? Huh? Now, will that intelligence be the Complete security. That intelligence is not yours or mine. We can all see a danger. A danger of a bus coming, hmm? danger of a snake, danger of a precipice, danger of falling down from the 18th floor. So we are all intelligent about that. We all say, no, that is most dangerous, don't do it. 
You follow? So this intelligence is common, is not yours or mine. So when there is that intelligence, there is total security. <coughs> That's a little difficult to see. We'll go into it. But do you first see the dangers of being conditioned? Not because I say so. That's totally irrelevant. But the fact hmm? do you, you start you wanted to investigate conditioning. And we are doing it. Do you see it? Not only nationalities, not only tradition, not only particular form of culture, but the conditioning that one of the conditioning is the search for pleasure. Right? Do you see that? Do you see all the implications of it? Not yet, no. So shall we go into it? Huh? Yes. You know, we were the other day when we were the students and we were talking together without the staff, we went partly into it. That is, pleasure is always in the past. Right? You saw that, did you? Huh? And pleasure is also a deep factor of isolation. Do you see that? No. Don't say yes and get on with it, but find out for yourself. It's part of your, if I may say so, it's part of your education here at Brockwood. To find out, not to accept, not to deny, but to explore, understand. Yesterday, Dr. Bowman, we were talking at lunch. Science is pure observation, without authority. Right? Pure observation, and from that very observation is action. Now, do you observe in yourself that pleasure? In any form, whether it's sexual pleasure, pleasure of power, pleasure of money, pleasure of saying I will do what I want to do, pleasure of possession, domination, all the rest of it, even the pleasure of knowledge, pleasure of a certain career, a gift, a capacity, all that is pleasure. The expression of it. Do you see that form that pleasure is always in the past, not at the actual moment? Right? Then also, now we're going further into it, which is pleasure, like great sorrow, is always separate. Cut off from everybody else. Do you see this? That pleasure is a factor of isolation. Not because we, the speaker is saying so, but it's a fact. When you are taking pleasure in something, don't you find you don't want to be disturbed, you want to push everybody away? <laughs> huh? Haven't you noticed it? And also when you are frightened, really frightened, it's also a factor of isolation. But you are still very young, thank God, and therefore don't know sorrow. 
grief, great pain, psychological pain. That pain, that grief, that sorrow is an isolating factor. These isolating factors like sorrow, fear, pleasure is the very structure, the nature of the Self, the Me. The Me is always separate, no? I... Well, that, that gets, that huh? gets to your, you were asking the question the other day, what is pleasure per se? Yeah. Yes, we come to that. First, first, see, first see what pleasure, fear or pain does. There seems a certain amount of difference between sorrow See, and pleasure. Talk a little louder because it's there seems a certain amount of difference between sorrow and pleasure in that um, somehow the brain seems to obliterate a certain amount of sorrow. And I, you, look, do you know sorrow? You know, kind of little pain, little disappointment, little uh, uncomfortable. Mm? But that's not sorrow. Sorrow is something very profound. It is, a, it is the summation of all your energy that says, I have lost something, I have lost my son, my wife. It's a tremendous challenge. You follow? I don't know what to do. It's too young, too young. Don't bother about it yet. So what, I'm, what we are trying to say is that pleasure is not only in the past. And pleasure is always the past, which we all, after discussing the real deal the other day, we all saw that, right? Now we're examining further. We are the same thing, which is pleasure is always isolated. I take pleasure in drugs, I take pleasure in sex, I take pleasure in, in different forms. And when I observe it very closely, it is a factor of separating me from the others. No? What do you say? Huh? Yeah. I don't, you say yes. <laughs> but do we all see the importance of this? Because I'm attached to that pleasure, a particular form of pleasure, sex, power, money, position, uh, all that. I'm attached to that. So where there is attachment, there is isolation. Do you see this? Huh? I am attached to this country or to this house, so that immediately I am separated, psychologically. There may be a certain sort of security and isolation as well. What? There seems to be a certain security in isolation. Of course, of course, that's the essence of security. I'm there I feel completely safe. Hmm? Yes. When I identify myself with Brockwood, the house, the people and so on, I'm <coughs> completely... You follow? <laughs> There's no disturbance. But you come along and say, well, it's not your house, it's not, I'm not your wife. And then I begin to be disturbed. But that attachment does not have to be exclusive, does it? What's that? That attachment does not have to be exclusive. I can't hear. The attachment does not have to be exclusive. Oh? The attachment doesn't have to be exclusive. It happens. No. Exclusive. It doesn't have to be exclusive. Ah, it doesn't have to be exclusive. Is that so? That's an idea. Indeed, it hasn't got to be exclusive. But the fact is, you are exclusive when you are attached. It's my wife. 
I am attached to her. Hmm? Don't say it has to be. It's, it's not. It's not. It hasn't got to be that way, right? You are saying that, aren't you? Yes, but but I I know. For example, I like to drive a car, but I I don't think uh, it it is. You like to drive a car. I don't think that. that Wait, makes go me into it, sir. Go into it. Are you driving the car <coughs> for a purpose, for a need, for or enjoying yourself? Just, huh? Driving down the lane, looking at the trees, dreaming. Be careful, don't dream too much. Do you know what I mean? Are you. What's wrong with that? I've often done that. I've had fun, I used to drive miles by myself, absolutely lost, you know, look, <laughs> but keeping on the road. Hmm? So, what's wrong with it? But if I'm attached to that and say, look, I've got to do it every day, it gives me so much pleasure and mm, all the rest of it, then I follow. You follow? Then that factor of attachment begins to, is- begins to bring about isolation. It's so obvious. So, pleasure is not only in the, the past. So, pleasure is the past. Pleasure also is a, one of the great factors of isolation, as fear as so, and so on. And when there is an attachment, that is also a form of pleasure which is isolating. I am attached to my wife, watch it, or to my girlfriend or boyfriend, I am attached. And what takes place? It's all right as long as follow <laughs> for a while the person to whom I attach likes it. That person may feel uh, <coughs> like being possessed, hmm? like being att- um, that how nice he is attached to me. Hmm? You follow all this? I wonder if you do. Hmm? All this brings about, doesn't it, concern about yourself. No? No? So that's what we are saying. Now, do you, if you see that actually in action, in your daily life, see that f- factor, how it is isolating, therefore bringing about division anxiety, fear and all the rest of it, the very perception of that is intelligence. And that intelligence will tell you when you follow, enjoy yourself going out for a walk and looking at the trees and all the rest of it. I wonder if you see all this. See, most people are concerned about themselves, right? About their beauty, how they look, how they dress, how, and they are also concerned that they must properly exercise, properly breathe. I am this. I am you follow? Tremendous concern about themselves, which is an isolating factor, obviously. No. No? If I am concerned about myself all the time, you don't exist. I may use you, I may exploit you. You will help me to be uh, concerned about my so on. So can I is there an action? Find out. Is there an action, is the way of living without this tremendous concern about myself?
what I must do, what I want, what etc., etc. We there are way of living without that self-concern. If you can find out, then intelligence is in operation, they will tell you what. You know, then everything becomes very simple. So, let's begin again. Are you actually aware that you are conditioned? If you are aware of it, if you know it, how will you uh, not have? Is it possible to break break it down and not enter into another conditioning? You follow what I mean? Go and inquire, find out. Is it possible, knowing I am a Hindu, born there, with the culture, the superstition, all that tummy rot that goes on in every civilization? Becoming aware of that and say, I must get out of this, and in the very process of getting out of it, I become, I joy, I am conditioned another way. I become a Catholic instead of Hindu. I say, Marvelous, how lovely. Hmm? I become a Catholic. Is find the path, you know? <laughs> right, so are you, are you doing this? See, if I am very concerned about my food, I must have everything else. And you go along and say, that's not the right way to live, I'm so, so concerned. I say, all right, but I become concerned in a, in a different way about different kind of eating. You follow different kind of food. I wonder if you follow all this, right? So I'm asking. Is it possible to live without any kind of conditioning, which is conditioning according to <laughs> acting or reacting according to some kind of conclusion, some kind of belief, some kind of opinion, some kind of fixation? You know this, this. If you go into it, it makes you extraordinarily alive, intelligent. You don't grow old, you're physically may old, but your brain is active, you know. Come on. So, what will you do to bring down to daily activity? What what do you do when when you are when you are, when there is pleasure? You are young, and there is sexual pleasure, sex, sensory attraction. You understand? What will you go into it? It's your problem. What will you do? Yield, give in, or resist, or try to escape from it? It's all wrong. I'm just, you follow? Deceive yourself and live in a kind of woozy world. What will you do? Absolute breathless silence. You can think about it. For one. Uh, we are thinking about it now, boy. Don't say we will think about it. No, I say you can't. That's what one can do. What? That, that's one thing. Uh, what? Think about it. How do you now? Think about it now. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about it? Well, uh, how do you think? In what way are you thinking about it? If I may ask, you don't have to tell me, but 
being quite impersonal, talk about it. How will you? How will you deal with that fact? You are biologically there's all that demand. How will you deal with it? In thinking about it, it seems wrong to. What? It seems wrong to to try and repress it. So, wait, wait, stop there. Why do you say it's wrong? Well, go into it. Most people suppress it. Yeah. They, that's part of their culture, part of their condition. If you say suppress, or if you are living in a permissive society, blow it. So what will you do? How do you think? Of, how how do you react to it? See, this is a common factor for all human beings, right? So, when we are talking about it, we are talking about something which is common to every human being. So, it's not me and my pleasure. We are talking of human. You follow? You are a human, and you are, a, you are being a human. You are the rest of the humanity, right? See that? You are the rest of the humanity. So when you are talking about it, talk in a global sense, including yourself. I wonder if you understand it. Hmm? Go on, sir. Because one of our major problems in a small community of this kind, and also this is a problem in the world, extended, it is the same thing. Could be uh, one could try to observe it, and, you know, as the say as sexual urges come well, up and such. How would, uh, to observe the. Do you action. see? Uh, do you see the whole consequences of it? You must go into it step by step, and you will see the, the what how it all ends up. The subject, the human conditioning, say, is so bigoted. Uh, there's so much fear and guilt and things about it. Of course, there's fear, guilt. That's reactions from our conditioning. If you're born in India, <laughs> and there is tremendous suppression there, right? And from that arises guilt, fear, and Great curiosity <coughs> and wanting to express and not right and get married early and begin all that. You follow? See, this is a major sub subject, isn't it? To all of you, and you become silent. <laughs> Is it because you don't know how to deal with it, and you want to be told? And if 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 you are told, you either accept it, hmm, and then make what you accept into an authority, and then that becomes a suppression from that, and the rest of Or do you say, well? I won't listen to anybody, I'm going to do what I like. Which is the same thing, the other way. Right? Let's talk it over together. We'll do it anyhow on Tuesday when, it's, when we all meet together, students and I, we meet together. But it's, part of this is good to express oneself openly in front of other people. It's good to put into words, it will help you to, to communicate. You know, there is skill in communication, 
right? To hold your hand skillfully, <laughs> you understand what I'm talking? To hold your hand skillfully and happily is very nice. <laughs> So I am find out what is your reaction to pleasure. These are how difficult it is. May I go into it with you? Huh? <laughs> See, you want me to do all the work and then you listen. Is that it? You know, once in India, I was staying in a house by myself in the hills, in the mountains, Kashmir, and they were digging a hole, six foot, and there were literally fourteen people trying to dig that hole. For two, twelve sat around and two people were working at that hole, <laughs> and they took three days to do <laughs> And it's the same thing, you want me to dig in that hole, into that hole, and you all sit around, look! <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Or will you... Together, let's find out, shall we? Together, right? Right. Which means together, not you listen to me and I do all the work and you look. <laughs> right? We're, we're, I mean, it's, it's good to go into it together. But one, one thing is that you know, some, just a, a, few will, a few will talk. And, uh, Doesn't matter, don't talk. It's not necessary to talk if you are really serious, say, Look, I want to find out. Hmm? Together we are digging the hole. Together we are entering this enormous problem of humanity. Right? First of all, why have human beings right throughout the world made this into an enormous blow it up, enormous thing? Why? The old, the young, the middle aged, everything. Why? Why? First put yourself that question. Why? Human beings have made such a colossal thing of sex. And from that being colossal, they have said, you know, the whole the world of the monks throughout the world, you say, they say, if you serve, come to serve God, that must put aside. Hmm? See the reaction? I'll go into it, I'll go into it with you presently. So why has man made this into such important thing. Why have you <laughs> made it such important thing? If you are not, are you going to make it? And if you are not me going to why don't you you follow all these questions you must answer. That's it. To answer, to find out, is a, is, a, is a form of intelligence. It's, I mean, you may not be able to read or write. If you don't read or write, then it's a form of ignorance. You can't find out what's happening unless you travel all over the world by yourself. <laughs> That's a different matter. There are exceptions. So, why? It's very pleasurable. Hmm? It's very pleasurable. Yes, go on. Is that the only factor? No. no. It's, 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 it
Go into it slowly, slowly. Don't jump in, jump to conclusion. Go step by step into it. We are examining quite impersonally. You follow? Nothing to do with you. It has to do with you because you are part of the rest of the human world, human beings. So, in understanding it, in going into it, finding out, you are investigating the problem which man has created. Why? Huh? In this culture, television and everything. Oh, of course, makes... for all that, you know, books here. Uh, laying such enormous emphasis on this central fact. Is it because it brings profit? Brings profit to the writer? No, to the commercial people. Yeah, of course, commercial people, yes. I used to know, um, I know, I used to know a famous writer. And he said, if I don't put sex into the book I'm writing, it won't sell. <laughs> We're asking, please ask yourself, we're asking ourselves together, why have human beings done this? The more civilized apparently we become, the more that thing becomes important. Follow the follow? The more civilized, the more uh, sophisticated, the more technology, everything outer, outer. You follow? The greater importance given to this. How is that so? So what? Watch it, sir. Huh? How, how is that so? I mean, I, mean, I, I just sort of have I believe for granted I, that I was told or by, by an anthropologist that real savages are not, you know, who just carry on. <coughs> it's not a problem. They don't make it such an Im immense thing out of it. For I am asking myself, you should be asking yourself, is it that the more we get so-called cultured, more knowledge, able to talk about various facts, you know, and talk intelligently about it, giving, showing that the importance of knowledge and so on and so on, that is driving you more and more inwardly? You understand my question? Huh? So it, listen to it first. I may be wrong. But I'm, we are investigating, therefore I am willing to throw that aside completely. I may be wrong. So I am saying, is it because we get more and more information outwardly, Mm? or even about ourselves, from others, the more I am inquiring, in a, I'm asking in a totally different direction an activity which is my personal, exclusive, secret pleasure. You follow what I'm saying? Mr. Joe, I thought you agreed. You understand this pro question? I wonder if I'm making myself clear. I'm not quite clear on it yet. I will, I'll communicate it carefully. You see, religions have become very, very superficial, right? Their ceremonies, their verbal nonsense, and so on, so on, so on, is meaningless. But yet, that plays an immense part in our lives. Then, people write books about so many things, and we read some of them, and agree again, outer. You follow? Or we acquire knowledge 
biological, um, scientific, archaeological, and so on, so on. Again, knowledge out of information. So we have got so much information, which is education, which is our culture, which is our being sophisticated. There must be a movement which is contrary to that. Inwardly. You know? Because I'm fed up. Who cares who goes to the moon and puts his flag up there? Who cares when somebody climbs the Himalayas? So, you follow? What? So I am being driven from the outer to go to the inner. And the, one of the inner escapes may be sex. Right? I say, maybe, I'm, I'm asking, I'm digging, brick after brick. And so the escape through sex, which is pleasurable, and because outwardly I'm a prisoner, hmm? inwardly I escape from this prison through that way, through entertainment, through. <coughs> you follow? I wonder if you get all this. I think I'm right. I'm going to stick to this for a while. <laughs> so, so is it that um, in a slightly, sli slightly more civilized society, huh? in a slightly more civilized society? Uh, of course, slightly more exciting, it's personality. <coughs> you follow? Yes, sir, but it, it's essentially something very emotional and not intellectual. Oh, wait, wait. First, we we'll, we'll come to the emotional part. Look at the fact. Is this so? The more sophisticated, the more prisoners we become to this rat race, hmm? you follow? Career, jobs, uh, 50 years working, 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 working in an office, factory, hmm? doing the same routine, routine, routine. This may be an escape from all this. Yes, it is. So I say to myself, I'm escaping. Is that a fact? I want to find out. Or am I escaping in other directions from this over cultural, over civilized, over sophisticated world? where there is more and more insecurity, more and more violence and all the disturbances, to escape from all that, not only sexually, I may be escaping in ten different directions. I may be escaping through taking drugs. All things I must do. I will do what I want to do. I am not dependent on anybody. But you are like the rest of the world, so you are doing exactly what the world wants you to do, which is do what you think you ought to do, which everybody does, anyhow. So is sex an escape? Is the pursuit of any kind of pleasure, inward pleasure, psychological pleasure, pleasure, an escape from the world? Please, I'm not saying it is or it is not. 
I'm asking you to get a way of living, so you have to find out. <coughs> and what am I escaping from? I can see very well I'm escaping. I don't want to be involved in violence or in this monstrous, ugly, immoral society, which has no meaning, all this circus that's going on around me. But it's not an escape. I see the absurdity of it and I take as little part in it as possible. But I must take part in it because I'm part of it. So that is not an escape. But right? It's possible to make it an escape, isn't it? I mean, Which? one can very easily make it an escape and say, I don't oh, want to take it. Of course, of course, you can do it. So, <laughs> is it possible to delude yourself in a million ways? But here I don't want to escape in some delusion or some form of imaginative illusion or hypnotize myself into some state. I want to look. As we said, the highest form of science is observation, in which there is no authority. So we are looking together, we are scientists in the deep sense of the word. You may not have a PhD and all the rest of it. In the deeper sense of the word, we are all scientists which are, who are observing. Already past one? Killer, I can't. No, it's 22 minutes. 22 minutes. So, and if I, I say I'm escaping sex, I'm temp, I'm hesitant, I'll be hesitant for the time being. Is sex an escape? An escape from what? From myself? Hey, watch it carefully. From myself? Not society, because society is what I want it to be. My ge past generations of my parents, my grandmothers, grandfathers of a thousand years have created this society, right? And I'm part of that society. So, am I escaping from myself through sex, with my worries, with my ambitions, with my uh, cruelty, my hurts, my uh, lack of integrity, lack of honesty, lack of intelligence? At least here I can escape from all this rot, which is myself. Is that it? Hmm? Go on. Well, just those, those sort of activity. It's maybe escaping from those activities that, that I do that I don't feel secure in, and that in pursuing pleasure, uh, the pleasure of sex, then I can feel secure in that because I'm in, maybe in control. No, no. Look, I'm talking to one thing. Don't bring ten. I am. Am I escaping myself from myself through sex? Uh, but I was wondering, you see, it strikes me that probably I am still involved in, in, no. in the sex. No, you're not. I don't follow. You don't follow me quite. Aren't you in confusion? Hmm? Aren't you uncertain to what to do? Huh? You say, no, I won't do what my father, mother, generation, tradition, uh, I won't do all that. I won't follow any guru, any system. You know, the, the, life has become tremendously uncertain, isn't it? Your future. 
No? Huh? Aren't you? Huh? These three agree, or four, the rest of you. Hasn't it become very uncertain? Hmm? So, that you may be escaping through sex from that uncertainty. Or if you are very sure that your future is well ordered, you know about it, you are going to work for it, even then there is a, always a suspicion, always uncertain that it may not come out as you want it. It never does. So again, that may be an escape from that. And we are. Our whole psychological background is to escape. Escape through suppression, hmm? escape through permissiveness, escape through control. You follow all this? So, our culture, our tradition, our background says, for God's sake, escape. If you don't, if you are married to that woman, she bores you, divorce her, go to somebody else, escape. So that may be a more I think it is. For me it is. All right, let's move from there. I'm very clear on this matter. Don't accept me. I'm digging with you. Don't go to sleep. So, do you also see that this is a form of escape from your confusion, from your uncertainty, from your uncertainty of the future, what you're going to do, what, whether you're going to marry or not marry, whether you're going to live by, with a girl or a boy for the rest of your life, and the children and all the rest of it is so terribly uncertain. Hmm? The future for young people is appalling. You may not realise it. It is appalling. That's why, for God's sake, while you are here, be uh, learn how to look, how to be intelligent. So, if that is an escape. And you are escaping from yourself, then that escape becomes tremendously important. You understand? A Catholic or a totalitarian mind says, That's my, I don't disturb me. For God's sake, leave me alone there. Any form of dissent is sent to a concentration camp or excommunicated or you follow, gets rid of the bird. I told you once, I was speaking in, in India, large crowd, about tradition and all the rest of it. A man comes to me afterwards, he says, Sir, may I tell you something? I said, Delighted. You ought to be burnt. You see his reaction? I was telling him something which is actual. He saw it and he, saw, he couldn't leave it, but turned that anger against me and wanted me to be burnt. So, find out if this is an escape from yourself, then. You will not escape if you clear all the <coughs> yourself. If you, you follow. I wonder if you have. A, I see something. I am escaping from my own confusion, from my own uncertainty, from my own lack of intelligence, lack of whatever. I am escaping, and therefore sex becomes very important. But if I, if I can clear up the whole structure of myself, you know, 
when there is clarity in myself, no confusion, no uncertainty, no fear of future, all the rest of it, that won't be an escape. You are following all this? So it becomes very important for me to investigate myself, not caught in sex and make that as important. I wonder if you understand something. You understand it? Hmm? Right? Do you understand this? Poor little. Hmm? So, all right. Either we all walk together or not. We're all walking together. So, I've got to explain this to you if you don't understand it. <coughs> Aren't you confused hmm? for the future? Aren't you uncertain what might happen to you? Where how you're going to earn a livelihood? When there are ten thousand people after the same job? Hmm? Huh? When there are overcrowding Overpopulation, everything is against each one, right? And seeing that consciously or unconsciously, you say, For God's sake, I must escape from this horror. And that may be sex, right? But if you work very clear, unconfused, not uncertain, this won't be an escape, will it? So then, we give importance to something which gives us an avenue of escape. God has given man tremendous escape. You can say, well, God created the world, God put me where I am, whether I am poor or rich, hmm? God is going to look after me, He's my Father, He will bless me, it doesn't matter if I suffer, if I, if I... Marvellous escape. So God becomes tremendously important. If you take God away, where am I? <laughs> you, you follow? In the same way, sex becomes tremendously important, if you take that away, you say, what the what have I else to do? Except be cry in this misery? <coughs> you got it? Are you getting this? <coughs> so I have to clear my own mind. So then wanting to understand yourself can also become a self concerned, isolating no, when you are investigating yourself, <coughs> you don't become self-centered, because you are the rest of humanity, right? Do you understand that? Is that clear? That is, you are like the rest of humanity, with their sorrow, with their misery, with their sexual problems, with their jobs, with, with their wives, with their husbands, with their girls, with their... Follow? You are like the rest of the world. So you represent the rest of humanity. So when you are investigating the representative of the rest of humanity, you are not self-centred. You may make it into self-centredness, but you, actually you are not. I wonder if you see that. So, then my concern is, I will watch sex, but I see if it is an escape, then it becomes a tremendous danger. Right? Tremendous danger. Then that's the only important thing in my life. That's the only thing I cling to. Everything I'm a slave to. <laughs> when I go to the office, I'm a slave there. 
or factory, I'm a slave there. When I go to church, I'm a slave to Jesus or to somebody else. Here, sex, there is certain freedom, certain etc., etc. Right? So I cling to that. That's correct. So it becomes enormously important. So I've discovered from that anything from which I escape, or anything from which I'm escaping to, that becomes important. If I am escaping through yoga, forgive me, then that becomes all my life. I'm, you follow? So, I must find out from what I am escaping. I say I am escaping from myself, from my confusion, from my uncertainty, from my lack of companion, isolation, from my loneliness, from you follow? All that. Right? Now can I clear, clear all that up? Then there would be no escape from anything. Right? Or towards escaping from to something. Therefore, I am very clear. Therefore, there is no need to escape. I wonder if you see this. At least logically, reasonably, see this. Intellectually, even. I mean, the world of bureaucrats is a marvellous world of uh, in clay, en club, in, in a cave by themselves. Hmm? Professors in a college and a university, they are completely safe there. Except Dr. Bohm. I am escaping from the camp. So can I, who, are, who is the representative of the rest of mankind, can there be clarity and therefore no escapes at all? You understand my question now? I won't escape through drugs, I won't escape through any profession, through sex, through anything. Because there's nothing from which I'm escaping. Right? So is this the reason why human beings have given such tremendous importance to sex? A woman that has no children becomes, uh, to her, having a child is something tremendous. And then she makes that into a tremendous problem. And that's the only problem, you follow? Everything else is, I must have a child first. So our life is dedicated to escape. <laughs> so are you doing that? We are digging together in this. So are you escaping? From your parents, from your etc. I am going to you know unless If all this doesn't interest you, 
you're bored with it. You might be some of you might be bored with it, all this kind of stuff. <coughs> Why are you bored? If you are bored. Why? Is it that you don't want to face this? Therefore you say, for goodness sake, I am fed up with this, talk mm-hmm. about something else. Are you? Is any one of you bored with all this? Or are so concerned that you are watching your hair curling and you follow? <laughs> To, in order not, no, let's put it, to keep sex in its right place is the art of living. Right? We said art means to put everything in its right place. If you put everything in its right place, there is no escape. You follow? Even to put the escape in its right place, <laughs> of course, I'm escaping from the noise of London. Not escape. That's uh, no, I won't use that word escape. It's obvious. To cause uh, personally. I put everything in its right place, there is no problem. So my then as to give sex its right place with all the emotion, tenderness, care, affection. If all that is involved in sex, then it has a right place. But if it is an escape, it becomes colossally important. Do you see this? At the end of an hour? An hour and a half? Nationalism is an escape, obviously. God is, a, is the tremendous escape for mankind. So can we find out reasonably, logically, sanely and healthily to put everything in its right place? And you can do that only if you are able to observe without any distortion, to observe your sex, your demand for pleasure, everything, to look at it without any it's bias, without any prejudice, without any direction. Like a good scientist that observes. So, I'm going to, we are going to observe ourselves, which, because we are so confused, because we are so uncertain, because we are so in great conflict or misery, whatever it is we are. And from that we are escaping through that one channel. So I'm and in order not to give it tremendous importance, I must understand the whole nature of my confusion. That's clear, isn't it now? Huh? Shall we then we better stop it's one o'clock. So shall we? Next time we meet, go into that. Bene. You better stop, don't you think? Are you all hungry? <coughs> right, let's.